Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another video here on Free Will Photos. Today, what we're gonna do is go through a moody black look. Now, this was something that I was inspired to create based off of a video that you can check out in the description box below. This individual was showing how to do it inside of Photoshop, and I said, you know what? We could do the same exact thing inside of On One. It's just going to take a few filters. So. This is the final effect, and this is what the photo looks like without the effect, and this is what it looks like with it. So let's go ahead and dive into making this effect. All right, so first things first, we gotta get some basic exposure going here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is add a filter, and I want to adjust for the color balance. So instead of using a color adjustment, I am going to use a color enhancer. Now. Here, all we want to do is boost the temperature just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot in the video. Uh, the guy used five, so that's what I'm going to go with. And then we also want to push the tint. Now, I think that in on one, uh, we need to push it a little bit more than 10. So I'm going to go with about 14. And we could always dial this back later, but that's just my take. The next thing that we need to do is control the contrast. So we're going to add another filter. This time we're going to add a tone enhancer. When we add the tone enhancer, all we're going to do is pull up on the contrast to about 30. All right. Now I like really contrasty photos, so I'm going to 34. You can dial yours however you would like. Now the next spot is going to be the shadows. Now because we want a moody image, we're going to pull these shadows down and we're gonna pull them down quite a bit. I'm gonna pull mine down to about negative 60. In the tutorial, uh, I think he used negative 50. But now we're gonna move the blacks and these we're gonna pull down as well. And you can see we're really starting to take on that moody look, that dark moody feel, all right? So we're gonna leave those to negative 40 and then we're gonna move into our clarity slider here. And you're just gonna put a little bit of that, right? Go ahead and let that, that photo start to, to pop, all right? So, so far, here's what we got, all right? And now, we're gonna jump right back into our color enhancer, and we're just gonna pull up on the vibrance. I forgot to do that. So, you gotta pull up on the vibrance a little bit here. Uh, and this is just gonna make those colors a little bit more saturated and more interesting to look at. Again, I'm gonna pull mine up to 22. Pull yours to whatever you think or try 22. So that's the first step. The second step is we need to add a curves adjustment layer or a curves filter over the top of these. So we're just gonna go ahead and add curves and we're gonna put an anchor point. Doesn't really matter where you do, uh, but in our shadows, we wanna put the anchor point in the shadows and then we're just gonna pull up on our blacks here until we're about a negative 16 out, negative 15 is ideal. It doesn't really matter. Um, I think the more you fade this, the better the look is. You can always adjust this afterwards. That's the beauty of working in this non-destructive workflow. So now that you have your curves adjustment layer or a curves filter added, we're gonna move on to step three, which is adding some sharpening. Now, what I did for my effect when I made it is I just went with the basic preset of sharpening and I pulled down the opacity because this was way too much. And I just dialed it in to flavor, uh, to my own personal style and taste. You try whatever makes sense to you, uh, or feel free to skip that all together. I think that you do need that, but it's up to you if you wanna add it. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is add a color adjustment, all right? So we're gonna go ahead and add color adjustment this time instead of color enhancer. Even though you could use the color enhancer, I think it'll be fine. Now we're gonna do a little bit of back and forth here because I'm gonna go through each of these sliders on their own, all right? We're not gonna to touch range. Inside of the reds, we're going to increase the hue by 50, all right? So we're gonna pull that up quite a bit. Go ahead and get that. And I'm gonna leave it at 50. And then we're going to take the yellows and we're going to reduce the hue all the way down to a hundred. All right. So that's all we're going to do with the hue. 
Now we're going to go back to our orange or go to our orange and we are going to decrease the orange by 25 in the saturation. All right, pulling down on the saturation, we'll just go 26 and call it good here. And then for the rest of the channels from yellow all the way through magenta, we're just going to bring this saturation down to negative 100. All right, so I'm just going to jump through these real quick and make my saturation minus 100. And then the next step is to add some brightness to all of the channels. And in the video, he just jumped it up by 10. So I'm just going to move mine up by 10. Uh, and this is just going to brighten up uh, all of these areas that would have been targeted by this saturation tone. But now we're just making things a little bit brighter. And that really helps when we started to pull down on those shadows, right? So you should definitely pull up on your brightness for each of these channels um, because that's where you're going to get some of that luminance value back. And just keep clicking there. All right. So now the next thing that we're going to do is add a filter that I don't use too often, which is color balance. Now, the reason we're adding color balance, I think you could use um, a different filter as well because all you're really using is the highlights. So I'll demonstrate it in two ways. But uh, with the color balance, what we're going to do is move the hue over to 30 while we're uh, on the highlights slider here. And we're just going to add a little bit, right? Uh, I think we'll go to about seven. And again, you can adjust this to your own liking. Now, this is the final effect. If I were to turn this off and turn it back on, you can see we're getting a pretty nice, moody, dark black effect. Now, of course, if you want to modify this to your own heart's content, then you absolutely can. Now, like I told you, I'm going to show you a different way than using color balance, especially if you wanted to maybe choose a different color that you wanted to add in here because with color balance, you can't actually do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn off color balance for a second, add another filter, and we're going to add a photo filter. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know I really like the photo filter. I'm just gonna dial this back. We'll go eight, uh, and then we'll move the hue down here to 30 again. Uh, and you can see that's more of an orange tone, but, this is applied to the entire image. Because all one is cool, you can use blending options. So all you have to do is come over here to the apply to, and then I can just select highlights. And now I essentially did the exact same thing that I did with the color balance, except for I have more control over one, the color, but two, how much I want to include as a highlight in this image. So if I pull this over to the right, you can see it's really starting to add this. Now, this is how I think this effect should be done, which is why I'm showing both ways. And you get to choose which one you would like to go with, whatever is in your comfort zone. But if I turn this off and turn it back on, you can see I'm really getting some saturation there. All right, so now that I have this all built, I'm gonna hit the little downward arrow and I'm gonna create a preset. And I'm going to call this black, if I can spell, black moody 2. And it is already inside of my preset testing ground, which is where I save all of the presets that I'm working on. We'll go ahead and hit save. And then I'm going to hit done. Now, I have a series of photos that I lined up. And for the last little segment of this video, I'm just going to show you how this particular preset can work on a variety of images. So as you can see, I had an urban image there and maybe you have something that looks a little bit like this where it's all flowery and, you know, just nice outdoorsy type thing. Well, look at this. I'm just going to add the black look and we'll see uh, what happens with this image. By the way, you can download these images in the Unsplash link that's listed below. Now, for some reason, it didn't want to show there. There we go. So this is uh, the edited version of 
that particular image or this image with the black look on it. Um, I'm not sure why I didn't want to show it before. Now, I don't think I can do a before and after in this view mode uh, just to cycle through these. Now, where I think this one, this particular preset really shines is in photos that have some yellows and, some, and a lot of grays. Uh, that's where I think this will really shine. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on Black Moody 2 uh, because I demonstrated the first one. And just look at that stylistic approach, which I think is really cool. Now, here is an image that maybe you wouldn't think to add this to. Uh, and I'll click on Black Moody 2 yet again. And I just get this style. It's a very consistent style. And because you know how it was built, if maybe I say, you know what, this is too, too much orange going on in the background, right? Or in my highlights. Well, all I have to do is come over here to my effects once I get there. And I can either turn this off and just use that as my effect, or I can leave it on and I can dial down the opacity. Uh, I can even change that color effect that's in my highlight. So look at how much you can stylize just one image based off of this preset. So that, that is really the power behind presets uh, in any software, not just on one, uh, is the ability to just throw something on really quick and make it happen. Now, I do want to demonstrate this on a raw file now. This is a raw file when I was in Colorado Springs. Uh, as you can see, there's already a lot of stuff on here. So what I'm going to do is take all of the presets or the, the settings that I have. I'm going to take those off and just go ahead and reset that. And now we'll open up the left pane here. And we're going to throw Moody 2 on this rock. And let's see what happens. Okay. So I get like a desaturated rock looking thing. Doesn't look the greatest, but it's something that I think you can play around with. And that's the goal here, right? Now, if I know for a fact that this preset is way too much for this image, all I have to do is come up to my layer stack opacity uh, or my filter opacity slider and just pull it down until I get to a point where I'm like, you know, before, after, yeah, I think I can... I could rock that and it looks a little bit better now. So hopefully you found value in today's video. If you did smash the like button, if you want to see more content like this, let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see more content of just photo editing in general, and you're not already consider hitting that subscribe button and don't forget to check the bell icon. So you get notified whenever I drop content just like this. And until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.